Welcome back guys, hope you guys are having a great day as always. Today we're going to be talking about Fibonacci heaps. So here's some stuff you should know. There's heaps. So if you don't know what heaps are, I do have a video on that so you can check that out. There's linked lists, but that's kind of optional. That's more about the data structure itself. But if you just want to know the theory, you don't have to know it. Amortized complexity. This is also optional because it's mainly just there to understand the benefit of Fibonacci heaps compared to regular heaps. Uh, but if you don't know it, that's fine too. If you just want to understand how it works, that's that's what I'm going to be talking about. So this is what I'm planning on covering today. So we have the data structure itself, the Fibonacci heap versus a regular binary heap, union, insert, extract min, consolidate, and decrease priority. These are all methods of Fibonacci heaps. So union is a new method that basically allows you to merge two different Fibonacci heaps. You can't really do this with regular heaps. What you would have to do is take out all the nodes and then just put them together. But that'll be like O of N complexity where the Fibonacci heap union is gonna be O of one. So let's talk about the data structure itself. I want you to first visualize how they're different from regular heaps. So a regular heap, a regular binary heap would look something like this, where every node can have up to two children. In a Fibonacci heap, any node can have as many children as they want like this they can have three maybe four they can have none at all if they want also another cool thing is that you don't have to have a root node anymore you can have a root list so you can have a root list with multiple nodes so it can look like that too and the data structure supports this because it holds lists rather than actual node values so this is going to be one doubly circular linked list so is this, so is this, and so is this. So if we actually had to understand how this looked, it would be the root node would be one big list like this. And they're doubling, so that way it can go left and right. And the right sibling of this will be this. The left sibling of this will be this. So it's kind of circular, so you can go back and forth. And now each node can have a pointer to one child. It only needs one child because one child can access every other child using a double circular linked list as well. So this entire thing is also going to be a double circular linked list. For our one more node here, we have one here and we can just draw it like that. So that's kind of what it would look like. It's kind of just like a bunch of node pointers and linked lists. The reason we like Fibonacci heaps more than regular heaps sometimes is because that in some cases it's more beneficial complexity wise. So when we look at the heap data structure itself, we can have n, which is like the number of nodes, but this is kind of optional. Not everyone has this in their data structure. We can have a root list, which is just a linked list of the root. Because remember, the root is not just one node anymore. It's a linked list of nodes. Finally, we have min, which is just a pointer to the min node. So given this example, we know that the min is going to be right here. And we know that the root list is going to be this entire thing. Also that n equals a. Now let's talk about the data structure of an individual node. So this or this, whatever it is, we'll take a look. So a node is going to have its priority. It's going to have its left and right siblings, its parent, the child, and the degree. The degree is just the number of children a node has. There's another Boolean value called marked, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. It's just marked true if a node has lost a child during a decreased priority. So with this heap, I'm going to look at the data structure of six. So I have six itself right here. I have the parent here, I have the child here, and then we have the left and right siblings as well. We have marked as false because it hasn't really lost any children yet. And the degree is one because there's only one child. Whereas if we looked at the degree of eight, it's also going to be one because it only has one child. If we look at the degree of 12, there are no children underneath it. So the degree is going to be zero here. If we look at three on the other hand, right here, we're going to see that we have a linked list of three nodes under it that's connected to it. So that means that it's going to have a degree of three. So here we're going to talk about the complexity between Fibonacci heaps and regular heaps. The main idea behind Fibonacci heaps is kind of that you're delaying all the work until you absolutely have to do it. That's why most of the methods have an O of one amortized complexity because you're doing the very bare minimum. The time you're cleaning up your mess is going to be extract min, which has an amortized complexity of O of log n. And you can compare it to binary heaps and you can see for yourself which one is better depending on the scenario. So I'm now going to explain how simple union is in Fibonacci heaps. So let's say you have two Fibonacci heaps. This is the min for this one. This is the min for this one. This is the root list for this one. And then this is the root list for this one. 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna merge this entire root list into one big thing and then take the minimum of the two minimums. So since the right minimum is smaller than the left minimum because this one is one, this one is three, we're gonna get rid of this minimum thing right here and we're gonna merge the two linked lists just like that. So now you have one big Fibonacci heap and you only have one minimum value, which is a minimum value for the entire Fibonacci heap. It's as simple as that. Now let's talk about another very simple method. It's called insert. All you do is add it to the root list and update the minimum as needed. So let's add these values right here. So let's start off with 23. All we're going to do is add it to the list just like that. We don't need to update the minimum because 23 is greater than three. Now we add 54, just like that to the same linked list. We don't need to update the minimum again because 54 is greater than three. Now let's add two. Two is smaller than three. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this minimum pointer and we're going to point it to two now. Finally, let's add one. One comes here. We add it and we have to update the minimum accordingly. So we take this and we point it here. And it's very simple. And now you can see why it's all of one complexity. But you can see how this can go on and on forever and just make a huge mess. Just a really big circular double link list that doesn't help us at all. That's where extract min comes in. So extract min is going to be the first complex algorithm that we use to actually clean this all up. So extracting min in a regular heap is very simple. All we do is we take the extract out and then we update the heap as needed. We're going to do something similar here. We're going to extract the min the same exact way. And then we're going to do something called consolidating. So we have this min value and then we check for children. So it has children here. So what we're going to do is so we can't get rid of three right away because it has children right here. So what we do is we add these three to the root list. So first I'm going to erase that minimum pointer and I'm going to put it somewhere else. So let's say in this case, the child, it doesn't have to be right. As you can see here, nine is not the minimum. The sibling six is going to be the minimum, but that's fine for now. So first we extract that three. We get rid of that right here. We'll move that out of the way because we just extracted that. Now we take this and we add it to the root list just like that and we connect it now once we've done that we're going to keep track of the degrees of each node so just to recall degree is just the number of children that you have so in this case you have zero in this case you have one zero one one two here because you have two children right here we're going to be focusing on the root list and the main idea of consolidation is that every node on that root list has a completely unique degree so we want to remove cases in the root list where two nodes have the same degree so for example nine and seven cannot both have the same degree of zero six ten and eight cannot have one two is fine by itself because there's nothing else that has that the way we're going to do this is we're going to iterate through every single node in that list and then we're going to merge accordingly if we need to so let's start off with nine nine has a degree of zero because it has no children so we're gonna put nine right here great let's move on let's move on to 10. 10 has one child so it has a degree of one that means we can put it in the degree one column right here so whenever you're coding this you don't really have to make this table right here all you have to do is make an array where each index represents a degree so now 10 is here no conflicts let's move on now we're at eight eight has also has a degree of one so we can't add it eight here like this. There can only be one value. So since we don't have space for both 10 and eight, what we're going to do is we're going to merge it. Since we want to preserve heap properties, we're going to merge 10 with eight because eight is smaller than 10. So 10 is going to now be the child of eight, just like that. We can't have it the other way around where eight is a child of 10 because eight is smaller than 10. And now you'll see that eight has a degree of two now. So we'll add that. We can remove 10 since 10 is not in the root list anymore. And we can just have eight right here. So now our table is gonna look like this. I labeled the degrees in red because that just made it a little bit more clear. And now let's move on to the next node, which is to the right, we're gonna to go to 11. 11 also has a degree of two now because it has two children just like here. We can't have 11 again. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did last time. We're gonna be merging. And we're going to take the bigger number and we're going to merge it with the smaller number. So right here, you can see that 11 is greater than eight. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire part and we're going to add to the linked list of the children of eight, just like that. 
We can remove 11 because it's not in the root list anymore. But now eight has a degree of three now, not two, because it has an extra child added to it. This means that we have to take eight and we have to move it down to degree three, just like that. We're almost done. We only have two more nodes to check and then we're done. So now we're pointing at seven and seven has a degree of zero because it has no children. So again, you can't have seven and nine both at zero. So we're gonna merge it. So since seven is smaller, nine is gonna be added to seven's children. So the way this is gonna look is it's gonna look like this, added here. You're gonna connect these two and then you're gonna connect these two, just like that. So now we can remove nine from the array because nine is not in the root list anymore. So we'll just get rid of that. Seven has a degree of one now. So we will move this to one, just like that. Now we're at our final node, which is six. Six has a degree of one as well because it only has one child. So I'll just put six here for now. And we're going to be merging seven with six because seven is bigger. We're going to take that and we're going to move it right here. Remove seven from the root list. So we're going to get rid of that. We have six right here. But now six has a degree of two because we just added seven to it. So this is gonna have a degree of two. We move six over here. And we're done. Now when we wanna find the min, we only have two nodes to check, six and eight, that's it. Compared to when we had five. And even though that's kind of a small number too, it could be a huge number and it can go down all the way to like two, three, something like that. So now we can find that six is gonna be our minimum value. And we have our pointer here. And we're done just like that and that's the entire extract min algorithm let's try it a little bit faster with a bunch of nodes that we inserted into an empty fibonacci heap this means that they're going to make a linked list just like that because no extract min has been called yet so same idea we have our root list like this we don't want any two nodes to have the same degree so let's extract the min the min is going to be this so let's move it here just for now it happens to be right it doesn't have to be right but uh, let's move one out of the way. We see that the degree of two is zero because there's no children. So we'll put two here accordingly. Now let's move on. We'll move on to three. Three has a degree of zero as well, just like before. So we're gonna have to merge now. Three is smaller than two, so we're gonna merge it with two. So we're gonna bring this all the way down here. Let's get rid of that. We've removed it from the root list, just like that. So let's get rid of three here. Two has one child now, so we will move two down just like that. So now two has a degree of one accordingly. Let's move on to four. Four has a degree of zero and nothing else has a degree of zero yet. So we'll put four just here. Let's move on to five. Five has a degree of zero as well. So it's gonna be fighting for that spot right here. Five is bigger than four. So we're gonna move that down here as well. We're gonna connect these just like that. And now we're going to connect those two. Four is going to have a degree of one now. So we can finally remove five from that root list. So he doesn't have to be in the array anymore. Four now has a degree of one though. So we can't really move four to degree one because two is already there. So we're going to have to merge accordingly. Two is smaller than four. So we're going to merge four into two, just like that. And connect this entire part right here. Two is now gonna have a degree of two. And four is not in the root list anymore, so we can get rid of that. Two has a degree of two now, so you'll move this down here. Now we're at our final node, which has no children, so it's gonna have a degree of zero, which is fine here. So since it works out, we're done, just like that. And that's how you do extract min. In some cases, you'll have a mess, like a long list like we had here. And then we narrow it down to only two nodes in the linked list. Finally, let's talk about decreasing priority. So this is where you use that marked Boolean value. So right here, I have eight, seven, and five marked, which means that they've already lost a child once. Let's say we want to decrease the priority of nine in this case. So if we decrease it to a number that's still bigger than seven, we don't really have to do anything but let's say we decrease it to zero for our sake. Zero is smaller than seven. So instead of 
just slowly making your way up like you would with a regular heap. What we're gonna do is we're gonna directly put this on the root list. So this is gonna come all the way here, just like that. And we're gonna connect these two. Now, once we do that, seven just lost a second child, which means that according to the algorithm, if you lost a child once already and you lose one again, you're added back to the root list. So we take this and we move this all the way up here. You can now unmark it. Eight is gonna be the same because eight did not lose a child or anything, it was not affected with it. So now you're gonna see that five lost a child right here. It has no child. And it's lost a child before, so this is gonna be the second time it loses a child, which means that we also add that to the root list. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna add that here, and we're gonna connect it with the rest of the loop with the rest of the root and we're going to unmark it accordingly finally we come to three three just lost a child which was five so we mark it since this is the first child that's losing all we do is we mark it and then we stop so this is what the final heap would look like it's just as simple as that the algorithm and code implementation will be in the description below Thank you guys again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and you understood it. If you do have any other video recommendations, please comment it down below and please consider subscribing because it'll help the channel a lot. Thanks again. All right, bye.